Hey guys, how you doing? Russ here with Ask the Wizard. So, quick housekeeping tip. And maybe it'll happen today, I don't know. But when you, I have the computer here too, so I might see it that way. But if you comment, I uh, appreciate it so much. I'm not seeing it all the time come up on the, on the screen on the phone here. So if, if you're commenting or shouting out and I don't acknowledge or reply, uh, that's why. So it's only because I didn't see you, okay? <laughs> and I check always check the computer later. So if you have any particular questions or comments or anything like that, be sure to comment because even though I might not see it here, I will see it right over here on the, on the, uh, on the computer. The show notes for this and I'll read it, are embrace the wild, powerful, passionate, exciting, wonderful, revolutionary, and unknown nexts. I, <laughs> I've said this several times to several people. Things are just weird now. They're just weird. I, <laughs> put it all in one word, things are just weird and, and i've said this again to many people it feels like we're in a really poorly written and badly directed post-apocalyptic movie like it's just bizarre when you see the things that are happening and and, and just the, the the my observation the craziness and so much it's like hmm it's like the world really is is marinated and is marinating in fear, and and this is this is just my observation, um, not a knowledgeable one, <laughs> but I. It, it seems like we talk about. I'm, I'm going to say this one sentence, and I'm moving past it. We talk about this pandemic. And it almost seems like I totally agree with that, but there's a pandemic far worse than any virus, and that's fear. And to me, I, uh, that's what I see. I see it, and I see it in people too. And it's like it's spreading and it's deepening and it's almost picking up momentum. And I think one of the one of the flavorings of that fear is the whole unknown piece of it. And it's like there's nothing seems to be stable anymore. And the normals that we used to think was normal, like right to the very core of, of our life experience is gone, if you will, is changing, is shaken up. We don't know what's going to happen next, right? And one of the things that fear does is fear causes us to react a lot, right? And so we see a lot of these, and again, I'm not knowledgeable on everything that's going on. Frankly, I don't want to be. Um, because you don't know who to believe and what and all that kind of stuff. There's there's so much unknown and those 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 standards, those foundations that we've depended upon and we've been confined by. I think that's the upside to this. Aren't there anymore? The the molds, right, that we used to live in. You know, I I often say, not now, uh, I often say that we are so, our life experience is so procedurized that you can kind of be born, live and die, and you don't have to think, right? Because there's a, a belief system, there's a standard, there's an expectation, there's a mold that you're supposed to fit in, and you don't have to think, you just kind of flip into this mold. Oh, okay, so when I'm at this stage of my life, then I fit into this mold. When I'm this, I do this, and then this, I do this, and then this, I do this. And, and our life experiences have been so externally procedurized, labeled, confined, that we don't really have to think anymore. We can just kind of do whatever, right? Basically live old paradigms. And I'm not saying that all those old paradigms didn't serve us. But I think what's happening is there's a whole crap load of them that don't anymore, maybe never did. I was raised on a farm. And when we would load cattle, many of you folks that are raised on a farm are very familiar with this. When we load cattle on a truck, you had to shoot, right? And so you've got the corral. And so they're in the pasture. So you, you, you uh, then you kind of herd them into the corral, right? So they're confined a little bit. 
right? Not like a pasture, but they're confined, okay? And so then what happens is you've got these, these two fences, basically, that form an alley or a chute. And they start wide, but then they get narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. And then right at the end, there's basically room for one cow, right? So it's, they're out in the field, they're doing whatever they want. And then without even realizing it, they're, they're kind of coaxed into this corral. And then they're kind of, and then the coaxing gets a little bit more forceful. And they're driven, if you will, narrower, 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 until pretty soon they're in this chute and there's just basically one way to go and that's up into the truck, right? And I think in many respects, in our history, maybe histories, I think that's what's happened, is we've had this pasture. Very interesting, I'm paralleling us with cows, but well, we've had this pasture where, where you can be whoever you want to be. You can explore. If you if you find a, a grove of trees over here that you really, really like, it doesn't matter if you're the only one in that grove of trees. That's it. I like this. I like this grove of trees. Does it matter if nobody else is there? No, it doesn't matter because this is who I am. And you explore. And then it's really insidious how subtle it was. This pasture that we used to roam around in. Just so subtly. I remember one of the things that we used to do is, especially if they were out in the pasture, if uh, you would go out with a truck and you'd have a like a bucket of, of chop, so feed, right? And you would kind of go to where they were. You kind of, well, when they heard the truck, they would look anyway. And you'd kind of take the feed, you'd bang the pail, and you'd kind of shake the feed over. So they'd see the feed. So they'd kind of hmm, wander over like lunchtime. And then you just sort of, we just kind of slowly drove with the truck and they just kind of followed along, right? And some of them wandered over here and some of them wandered over here. And you just kind of gently kind of guide them back and they follow. And the gate's nice wide gate going to the corral, not a narrow one, nice wide gate. They just kind of move in to the corral and then the gate is shut. Now they're in the corral. And they don't even realize that they've been corralled or confined or defined. And I think that's what's happened, is we went from absolute freedom. And I'm not just saying since this whole zombie apocalypse thing. I think the zombie apocalypse thing is just, just, just bringing our awareness to the fact that we were. And giving us an opportunity to break out of it. And so we're confined, but we don't even realize that we are. I think that's the thing. You get all these cattle, they're in this corral, and, and if, if they're the ones at the fence, they maybe realize it, but all the ones in the middle, they don't even realize they're confined. And I think that was the thing, is we were confined and didn't even know it. And when you think about it, that is the, the perfect strategy of, you know, an opposition, right? And I think that's the thing with with these constructs, I, I, I posted, you've seen the flavoring of some of my posts lately. One of them was, you know, never be afraid to live a life that people don't, that others won't understand or don't understand or may not understand. You know, another one is seeing through the societal constructs and the, I can't remember, the predetermined biases and things like that. Being willing and being courageous enough to allow who you are to really shine through and to radiate out. I think what happens is we get confined without even realizing that we're confined. We get confined by this is what you're supposed to do in this society. This is what you're not supposed to do in this society. This is what is acceptable. This is what isn't acceptable. This is what a responsible person would do. This is what an irresponsible person would do. And we, we're, we're in these confinements and we didn't even realize we were. And that's the thing. If you realize you are, now you can make different choices. But I think that's the greatest strategy is to confine somebody without them even realizing they're being confined. And that's been happening all over. Globally, corporately, families, individuals, it's scalable, right? We're in, we're in a prison with walls we can't see. Or we were. And then this happened. Zombie apocalypse happened. 
And all of a sudden, I think two things, it was just kind of spontaneous. Two things happen and are happening. The first one is that corral is, is being shaken, right? The boards are being knocked off in some respects, it's just knocked right over. Because that's the thing with, with the corral like that is in many respects, you don't have to think a whole lot, right? Because you can wander around and, and the cows, that's what they would do. They'd kind of wander around. And then when they get to the fence, of course they would stop, right? And then they just kind of wander the other direction. And I think in so many respects, that's what has happened for millennia, probably, is we've had these fences built around us. Yeah, I'll leave that for now. These fences built around us that we don't even know are there anymore. And, and they might have been built long before you entered into this existence. But you entered into this existence already in the corral. And I think that's the other thing, right? Is, is there's so many of us that when we were born, when we entered into our body in this existence, we were already inside the corral. So we, we've never experienced life outside the corral. In the pasture where you could go wherever you wanted to go, where you could be whoever you wanted to be, and it was okay. That you didn't have to be the same as everybody else. That you didn't have to fit the mold, right? You didn't have to, so that I didn't have to fit the mold. I haven't fit a mold for a long time, but I've also discovered corals in my life in this zombie apocalypse, um, a little before too, is to fit into this mold of what you're supposed to be, who you're supposed to be. When If you're a female at a certain age, at certain stages, you're a male at certain, you know, certain stages in your life, this is what you're supposed to have, not supposed to have. And then if you don't, either overtly or subliminally, you're ostracized, ostracized and judged for it. And so often, this is just, this must be source because I'm not consciously thinking this. So often that judgment is not overt. It's not in your face. It's subliminal. It's just underneath the surface. And you might not even be consciously aware of, aware of it, but your body and your spirit feels it. And so maybe, probably, anyone that's listening to this, including me, have experienced that. And we might not even be aware we've experienced that. Right? How many of you were taught? Actually, not even taught. You just, it just kind of, you just born into it of, of what it means to be, if you will, a responsible person. Right? How many of you have been born into what responsibility means and, and, you know, meeting expectations of other people. And, and we were taught that we, you know, you're not supposed to be selfish. So what does that mean? Well, not being selfish means I put others before me. And we've taken that all the way from, I don't always take the last slice of cake to, I never eat the cake, right? We take that, I mean, you're not supposed to be selfish, right? So you put others before yourself. And we've taken that to being, you're not supposed to be selfish. So we take everybody, and put them before us. I'm just going to flip over to here because I will glance every once in a while. I may see some comments that I can refer to. Oh, hey, guys. So, hey, Tasha. Hi, Lonnie. How you doing? Thanks very much for tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, and, and we've allowed ourselves to be contained by this and confined by this and identified by it. And I think what happens is then we've forgotten, maybe never really knew, who you really are. And it's so subtle. And as I said, so often you're born into it, so you, you don't even, there's a fence. I didn't know there was a fence. I didn't know there was something outside of the fence. And what I see happening right now is the fences are collapsing. They're falling apart. Again, these foundations, and I've been hearing foundations have been a big word for quite some time now. That the foundations, long before this ever hit, the foundations are shattering. The foundations need to be basically, the house needs to be tore apart. The foundation needs to be sometimes rebuilt, strengthened, whatever, so a whole new house can be built. And that's a theme for coming up to a year now. And I think that's what's happening right now. And I... For me, and I'm in the same thing with you guys, my life experience has been severely 
Hmm. Upended in many, many ways. Just like all you guys. Now, where's the opportunity in that? Now, this is for me, that's I think what you know, hashtag living from the other side really embodies. Embodies, interesting word, is who who am I? And I think that that's such an interesting question to ask. Sometimes a really scary question but at the same time, a very empowering one. Because pre this, who am I, was so often defined by people, places, things, and events outside of us. It was corrupt. Who am I? And so often, the answer to that question ends up kind of hanging out with all the things we did wrong or all our limitations or all those type of things, right? So, so who am I? Am I my past mistakes? Am I what I do each day? Am I my thoughts? Am I what other people think of me? Am I the expectations that I have to meet from everybody? So often, the answer to who am I is followed by that. Who am I? The labels that society has placed on me and maybe I placed on me. Who am I? Am I predominantly less than enough? And I think when we're in these corrals, the theme of less than enough is, is really accurate. In an interesting way, we are currently experiencing less than enough because of the corrals, but that doesn't mean you are not less than enough. And I think that's the thing. So often our identity comes from people, place, things, and events outside of ourselves. It comes from our history. It comes from these labels. One of the, the, the interesting understandings that has been presenting itself to me is, and this is this piece of nothing new, nothing you, new for you guys, is that, that you're a spirit inside a body. Every one of us are a spirit inside, of the, inside a body. And just, our spirit was never designed to be defined by external labels. Our spirit, in the very essence of who you are, is based on harmony. I remember uh, music. Um, I kind of dabble in it, I guess you would say. But when you when you read the theory books and stuff like that, man, I see like the harmonics and all the different things. You'd think you're looking at like a quantum physics book or something like that. Uh, it's really interesting how. Music and harmonies and flowing is really the basis of our universe. I remember reading a book and it talked about how in uh, so in like in astronomy and things like that, there's it's like music and and the vibrations and the frequencies are music and they're all just resonating and harmonizing with some and not harmonizing with others. So who you are is the spirit, a radiant powerful spirit that vibrates in this infinite number of frequencies forming this amazing it's like a thousand piece orchestra there's a thousand pieces of you all vibrating in their own unique way but all blending together into this one magnificent sound and as you do that you will find other spirits that don't have to be exactly the same other spirits that harmonize with the song that you're singing. And then there's this. Right? And it's not based on shoulds and shouldn'ts, and this is this and this is that. It's based on what makes your heart sing. And that 
is what's coming up now is how we in many respects live our lives now that the constructs that maybe we never knew were there and now we're discovering they're there or maybe we did know they were there but we didn't know how to break out of them they're breaking down now and so now it's really time for us to begin to think for ourselves again to be able to feel for ourselves again and to discover who I really am and, and to allow ourselves to allow our consciousness if you will our awareness to discover who we've always been because it's been clouded over for so long I've But an interesting uh, experience for me in this last little while. And sort of almost staying with, the, as I said, the whole thing I gathered about there, the powerful, you know, exciting unknowns, nexts. What is the next for me in the healing center, right? And to use a label, <laughs> and some of you well, I've seen this a while ago now, what I call convergence method, or even just simply convergence. And so what's convergence in a nutshell? And that's just a label I've used. That's all it is, right? So convergence in a nutshell is a blending of two, I'm going to say primary energy flows, understanding we, we cannot be kind of squished into black and white, right? But two primary energy flows that every one of us are designed to embrace and feel. The one that flows like this, which using CM, CM theory we call masculine, one that flows beneath and up, the two meet here, radiate out, that we call a feminine. Not, ma not male, female, masculine, feminine. So I have masculine energy and feminine energy, right? That happens to be, I am a spirit in a body that you would call a male that has masculine and feminine energy flow. And, and really CM is about embracing not just the feminine, but both of those flows. Now, a lot of it's focused on the feminine because that's where I see the biggest constriction has happened over, who knows? And you've probably heard the, the label. Uh, as you know, I'm not a big fan of labels because everybody has a different connotation of what a label means. You'll often hear it referred to as a divine feminine, right? So I just call it feminine energy because both of these are divine, right? But it's that power fem powerful feminine energy flow that's been constricted. And that's where the power comes from. I was, I was just about ready to post another picture here. So if we're using that masculine energy flow exclusively, which is really what a lot of the world functions on. So when it's, when it's that way, boy, I'm heading all sorts of neat directions. So when it's that way, when we're very heavy in that masculine energy flow, it ends up being very controlling. Now, the masculine energy flow isn't bad, but when it's not balanced, it ends up controlling. And what's really interesting is control comes from fear. Power comes from freedom. Power, power comes when we're blending both of these together. You see, when both of these are blending together, now the masculine can set the stage, can set the direction. But it doesn't have that need to control. Why? Because the feminine is coming through to support it. Right? And, and that's what I see in a very big way happening right now. Is that, that feminine archetype, you could probably even use that word, has been neutered in many respects. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not a scholar in this area at all. But when I look back at what I do see, the feminine and the feminine energy flow 
has been vilified, nullified, ostracized for centuries, right? That's why I think in many respects, fear is so prevalent because if you don't have the feminine, then all we're doing is moving from the masculine and we're designed to be powerful creators. But so when we mistake control for power and we think that if I'm powerful, that means, and we don't articulate it this way, I'm controlling something. I'm controlling the stuff I have. It means you're really, really powerful. It's the exact opposite. It's coming from a place of fear. And I think what's happening now is that whole thing. So many of those corrals were built from that place of fear, that place of confining for all sorts of reasons and motives. And that's being broken down. And the feminine is being woken up now. And the feminine says, this is who I am. The feminine says, as this energy flows, we're sort of coming out of the proverbial closet kind of thing. This is who I am. This is who I've always been. Maybe I didn't know it before. Maybe I didn't realize it before. But this is who I am. And who I am, who you are, wants to live. And right now is the perfect opportunity to let that flow in, through, and out. Because those corrals are falling to pieces all around us. And people are freaking out everywhere because they don't know what to do. Because now all of a sudden they realize there's a pasture, there's this, but I don't know what to do because, and this is just me, because I haven't had to think. I just fall into these patterns. I actually haven't had to think for so long. I just remember you know, people tell me the processes, the procedures, all that kind of stuff, right? But now is the time to embrace that feminine. And, and that's what I see. CM is now coming back around again in ways that I never realized and in roles that I never realized it was going to play. In many respects, it's about building a new society. Not one that's based on... Again, what your past is, what your what those labels were, what society says you had to be and that you tried to fit into. This is the time to allow your being to flow and to say, this is who I am. And it's okay if you don't understand it. It's okay if you don't agree with it. But this is who I really am. And for me, the foundations of CM in a much bigger way, convergence method, is building the framework of a community that's not built on framework. <laughs> it's been built on spirits, wandering around in bodies, this amazing experience called life. And what binds a community together is not gender, it's not race, it's not economics, it's not geography, it's not politics, it's not all that type of stuff. It's based on harmony. It's based on resonance. And that's powerful. You are an amazing individual. And I am so incredibly thankful and so proud. And I know, I know there's a new, yeah, new world order. <laughs> That's what's being birthed from this. And there's a lot of unknowns in it. But what I'm pretty sure is what you're feeling in your heart is that flavoring of I probably won't see it now like okay wild powerful passionate exciting wonderful scare the crap out of you sometimes <laughs> revolutionary unknown nexts what I see right now is a rising up of that feminine energy flow. A returning to a knowing of who we are. And that's incredibly powerful. And uh, 
Can't wait to take the journey with you. Share, share, share. We're all in this together. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, and your comments. I, I appreciate it so much. We're all in this together. Let's build together. All right. See you on the web.